July 9th, 2019, Rangeley Town Council meeting. Roll call. Lisa? Andy Schaefer? Here. Andy Key? Here. Tyson Hacking? Here. Trey Roby? Matt Bilgren? Luke Gear? Present. Elisa Granger? Here. Tyson, would you let it lead us in the invocation, please? Absolutely. <clears throat> Our dearest Count Heavenly Father, we're so very grateful for this wonderful day and wonderful opportunity to live in this great town. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless us, that we can have that guidance in all that we do. Bless us to make the right choices and to help those in need. Bless us, Heavenly Father, to always think of, of thee in, in our choices. And we ask you to bless the armed servicemen that sacrifice for our freedoms. Bless them with safety and protection. We love thee and say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Lisa, would you lead us in the pledge, please? <clears throat> pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 5, minutes of the two, uh, June 25th, 2019 meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the June 25th, 2019 meeting. Second. Motion was made by Andy, second by Luke. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Lisa, do you want to slow down? Are we good? Are we good? <coughs> You're good. Okay. Petitions and public input. Uh, Michaela Barton, you're first. Hello, Council. Thank you guys for allowing me to come and kind of give you a quick update. Lisa, how much time do I have? Uh, Five oh. minutes, ten minutes, thirty uh, minutes. Yeah. I can fill up however many minutes I have. We're supposed to do about three. But okay. Okay, I'll be fast. Um, so I just wanted to introduce wait, wait. myself. Um, I Michaela, sent out, oh. okay. you've got you got time. We'll give you time. Okay. Don't okay. rush through it. We want to hear what you have to say. Three minutes. <laughs> okay. I won't give you the, the windy version then. Um, my name is Michaela Barton. I am the Economic Development Coordinator for Rio Blanco County. Um, I've met some of you, haven't met some of you, but I think I've spoken with you all at one time or another through email or some way. So... Um, I just wanted to come introduce myself, show my face, say I'm here, and just kind of share with you some of the things that the Economic Development Department has been doing over the past few months. Um, I started in the department a year ago as Caitlin Cook's assistant, and she left in February, and I've been filling in since then. Um, we have hired um, and somebody to take my old position as the assistant, and that's Rachel Gates, and you guys might know her. She's our current planner. And so there's going to be sort of a transition period where she moves from planner to economic development specialist, and then they're going to be hiring a planner or replacing her as well. So um, I'm excited to have help. Um, I've just been trying to kind of keep my head above water <laughs> um, this for the past few months. But anyway... Um, Really cool economic development wise, um, Commissioner Rector and I went to Medford, Oregon a few weeks ago and we testified in support of the Jordan Cove export facility project that they've got going on. Um, I was really um, honored to be able to go and be a part of that. That's the first time I've ever, ever experienced anything like that so I wasn't sure what to expect but um, overall positive um, compared to Jeff was saying that the, he's gone before back a few years ago when they were trying to get this to go through and it was lots of protesters um, lots of questions and since then um, they have really answered a lot of questions and so anyways we hope that we hope that um, the FERC will allow this to go through this time because it's going to be huge for for us here for this whole region and so um, that I probably won't ever do anything better economic development wise than support that project um, Jeff actually got a call from Vice President Pence the week after we got back, right before 4th of July, and um, had heard about it, called him on his cell phone. He didn't answer at first, and he left a voicemail, and he thought somebody was playing with him. But anyways, um, he just said thanks for um, – Jeff finally called him back after he kind of thought about it a while, and um, he 
was happy with what we were doing and, you know, supported it. So I think, you know, press got him there and I don't know, it was pretty cool. So that's, um, was kind of a highlight of the past couple of weeks. But, um, one thing that the commissioners have kind of um, put on the economic development department that may not have been, uh, a focus um, too much in the past is just the communication that we have, that the county as a whole has with our constituents. And so uh, we're working on redesigning our website so that we can use it as a communication tool because we don't really have any way to communicate anything really other than, you know, the paper that comes out once a week and that's not always um, what we need. And so we're going to um, be working on our, the Rio Blanco County website, um, and just making that a uh, trusted communication source so we can get out what we need to get out and using social media and all of that together. So we're kind of working on that plan and hopefully that'll, that won't take too long to get it, to get up and running. Um, um, I'm trying to think what's on the top of the list. Um, investment perspective. So, as you guys probably know, the east side of the county is an opportunity zone. The west side of the county is not. Um, I would really like to, and I'm not sure exactly how this works yet. I'm, I'm trying to figure out grant opportunities and whether it's going to be myself and Rachel or we hire a consultant to come in and help us to develop a countywide investment prospectus, which is um, just kind of getting everything that we've got in one package. So that's going to be our natural resources inventory, our commercial properties, anything that any sort of investor, just a really broad, um, broad package that's going to tell whoever it is what we have um, that we can share. And so I need to get with Lisa and talk to her and also the town manager and Meeker and just kind of figure out how we can best do that to suit the towns also so that it's not too broad, um, but we have specific things for the towns because then it's something that we can use, you know, because if right now if there's someone doing site selecting or interested in investing in one of our towns, we don't really have anything to show them of, you know, and who knows who they're going to end up talking to or who are they going to call first? We don't know. So anyways, something that we can just give um, right away that kind of shows off what we have and we don't miss anything. Um, we... Our, we have a couple of new implementation grants. Um, one of them has is kind of this next step after our outdoor recreation blueprint project that we did last fall. And um, I don't know if Lisa may have already told you guys about this, but we've got $4,000 that we'll be able to put towards the um, uh, gravel grinding road bike event that Jocelyn's planning on doing next fall. And so $4,000. And, and I'll be administering that just because we were the or original people that signed up for that grant last fall. Um, and then um, our marketing plan development is huge. Um, we've um, gone through a couple different strategic plans for different aspects of how we can market ourselves. So one of them was a broadband marketing plan. And I just got the report from that last week. Um, and then we have a social media marketing plan and a tourism marketing plan, and what I want to do is just put them all together. Our budget um, planning is coming up. Figure out how that looks for 2020, and I really want to work with both towns and figure out how can we work together to get the most bang for our buck so we're not duplicating efforts, um, tell you guys what we're doing, see what we can do. Again, you know, that's going to help you guys the most as far as marketing goes. We haven't really spent too much money on online marketing, which... Um, is kind of crazy, but I did bring you guys these packets um, that show you some of the printed marketing that we've been working on. Um, so we've got broadband network specific marketing, um, just come live here marketing. <laughs> um, our SBDC, we have a snowmobile trail map, um, a road map, which they're super cool. We've already got rid of probably, I don't know, 300 of these just in the past month that we've had them. Um, and then just kind of what we call an itinerary that just kind of shows um, countywide if somebody just stops by, hey, what do we do? It's just some really cool information. So those are some printed materials that we've been working on. Um, but really the online marketing is super important for us because um, people don't know where we are and they don't know what we have. And so um, I think it's just really important and we're going to really – ramp that up on our end at the county for next year and we'd like to be able to work with you guys and, and um, just figure out what what 
we can do to help the most. Um, last thing is we met with, and I, you guys, I think I heard you talking about meeting with the Colorado Space Business Roundtable today. So we met with them yesterday, and we shared with them our data center. And uh, these were um, people from Lockheed Martin and Manufacturers Edge and Denver Metro's Metro, a couple economic development people from the Front Range. And uh, they were, they're doing their road trip that they do once a year, and they've never been up here. And so we showed them our data center and talked to them all about our remote work um, opportunities. And Lockheed has 400 location-neutral remote jobs available, and they didn't know. They were super impressed with our Internet and our availability to attract remote workers. And he's like, this is what you guys need to be sharing. And I'm like, I know. And so... Um, we we got an invitation to go to their space symposium, and he said they're going to be hiring 1,200 um, software engineers in the next two years, which is crazy. But so, things like that, those people that can work from anywhere, that's, you know, we've made a big investment in our broadband, and so now we need to let people know that we have it here, or else why did we do it? <laughs> so anyways, um, that was all I had. I don't know if you guys have any questions for me, or otherwise, I just want you guys to know that I am here. Um, Rachel and I are going to be working um, at least once a week starting probably the beginning of August from our office, which is down the hall. And um, we'll be doing some SBDC stuff, but we're just going to be be here just so that there's a face here um, at least once, but we're going to shoot for twice a week that we'll be up here. Um, so that's all I have. We kind of said Monday and Wednesday. Um, I'm waiting for her official start date so we can know for sure. Yeah. If there's a day that works better for you or any of you, let us know now. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Yep. But I hope that helps with uh, – we're super excited about your maybe marketing person um, and hoping that we can work together with that person. That will be great. So. Okay? Great. Thank you. All right. You. Thanks. Thank you. Jennifer? Thank you for having me. For those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Jennifer, and I work for Northwest Options for Long-Term Care, and that is a department within Garfield County. So I work for Garfield County, but I work here in Rangeley. I cover Rio Blanco and Moffat County, providing services for elderly and disabled people. And so I just kind of wanted to go over a little bit about how people potentially qualify. And then I also have another program that I run that's a grant program that is supported by the AGNC as well um, and getting services to anybody 60 and over. And so um, our program is Medicaid RAN. And so a person has to qualify for long-term care Medicaid in order to be on our program. Um, how I receive my referrals is they turn in a Medicaid application for long-term care. Then the Medicaid technician will send me a referral. I then reach out to um, the community member, whether the family's involved or it's directly with the client, um, see if they are functionally qualifying. And when I say functionally qualifying, I'm looking at their medical background and checking to see do they need help with bathing, dressing, um, mobility, transferring. That's how I score them. My ultimate goal is to keep them out of a nursing facility and keep them in the community. Um, I can tell you since I've started, and it's almost been two years ago that I've started doing this line of work. Again, I did it in Mesa County for seven years. Um, I have doubled my caseload in Rio Blanco. Um, which is very, very important people and here in Rangeley especially. I can tell you that a majority of that doubling my caseload, I ha only had 20 cases when I started. Now I have over 40 cases. The majority are here in Rangeley. People are, are knowing that I'm available to them. Um, I've gone out to providers, let them know I'm available. Um, I also receive nursing facility visits as well. There are times that people do need to be put in a nursing facility. They can't afford that nursing facility, and so Medicaid helps pay for some of that nursing facility stay. Um, the financial side to it, I, I don't know a whole lot about that. I don't know how I know that they can't make any more than $2,300 a month. 
um, and they can't have, they can only have so many assets, and I think it's over, they can't have anything over $200,000 in assets. And so they have to qualify not only financially, but then functionally through myself. And then once we pull that together, then I'm the case manager, and I put them on a waiver, and I did bring um, more of my popular waivers, which is, one is the EBD waiver, which is our elderly, blind, and disabled. I also have a mental health waiver that I can put somebody on, as well as um, we also have a children's waiver. And so some of the services that are available is like I can put a homemaker in the home to help them get their home clean, um, help somebody get their bathing done if they need help moving from one location to the next because they're not able to do that. We help pay for those services and put those in place. Unfortunately, not a lot of the services that are listed on these are available um, just because we live in rural Colorado and we don't have transportation, unfortunately. Um, we're lucky enough here that we have um, the Redino bus and um, Meeker Streaker, but I can tell you that, that it's, a, it's a huge problem in Moffitt County. We don't, they don't have the resources like we have here, so that part... I'm truly thankful for because I can't hire somebody with a taxi cab to come pick up my client and get them to their doctor's appointments or get them to go shopping, um, unfortunately. If somebody knows of a taxi company that wants to start over here, I would love to talk to them and get them Medicaid certified because they do have to be able to bill Medicaid in order to provide services to my clients. Um, so that's just a really quick overview of the services that I provide. A majority of my clients are that. But then I also have what we call the ADRC, which is supported by um, AGNC, and it's all grant ran. Um, you have to be 60 and over um, in order to qualify for our services. And we provide equipment, so if somebody needs a walker, um, and they can't afford to buy a walker, we can purchase a walker for them. Um, if they need a ramp, we can purchase a ramp for them. Um, our goal there, again, is to keep them in their home as, as long as possible and not have them go into a nursing facility. That's the ultimate goal. We can pay for respite. So we even pay for respite for a grandparent that's taking care of a grandchild. And they're 70 years old, and they've got this little one at home. And they need respite, they need a break, and so we, we can pay for that at times. Um, we can also pay for somebody to go in there and do homemaker services, personal care. Let's say they don't qualify for long-term med Medicaid because they're over, the, you know, they, they barely are over that $2,300 limit, but they still can't afford to pay for somebody to come into their home. Um, we can help supplement some of that. Um, we don't unfortunately have a whole lot of money. I wish we did. Um, but we do give 750 if it's a caregiver support. If it's equipment support, our limit is $500. And that's every calendar year. And our calendar years are July to June. And so every year they can get that money again. Um, so other than that, those are my two programs. And I hope I stayed under my three minutes. I'm <laughs> trying to be as quick as possible. I will leave um, this packet with and there's also going to be that same information at our community resource pantry as well. I'll be presenting to that board next month. Any questions? All right, thank you. Thank Thanks you. for what you do for Rangeley. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a couple other people that want to talk. Okay. Ron, did you want to talk? Sure. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor, members of the board. Um, but I wanted to do a couple of things. First, uh, I wasn't here two weeks ago when you guys were generous enough to to vote to help us out with the splash down that we're going to have. But I wanted to answer a few questions I know that you had. The first one is that this is a public event. Anybody can come to this, and that's what we want it to be. Uh, we're, we're hoping that we'll get, uh, last year we had about 100 people. This year we're hoping to get close to 150. We don't know if we'll reach that. It depends on who shows up. But we also are looking in the future. I know that you guys would would like to see what can happen where we can get more money and possibly do more in the future. So we're, I've already talked to several people and we're trying to see what we can do to do that. But again, I want to thank you guys for that. And I don't know if you have other questions about how that's going to work. It is July the 20th and we have our, our plane that we will dedicate that day. 
the, the plane that was given to us, um, that is our float plane. So that will give us the opportunity to teach that and get that certification for our students so that they then can uh, land a plane anywhere. If they go to Alaska or the Bush country, whatever they do, they'll be able to do that. So, But anyway, so uh, I will uh, be able to answer any questions if you have those. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the Aerospace Roadshow, uh, which Michaela talked about when the Meeker. They were here today uh, at the airport and then on campus to talk to us about our aviation program and our aviation maintenance program. And they walked through several of them. We let our students speak because they speak better than the rest of us. And uh, they were very impressed with our students, especially our NIFA students, who were the ones who, who did the, the competition. And it, when, when we sit down and had discussions, it, it was really kind of interesting because Everything we've talked about with Rio Blanco County and Rangeley and, and, and the rest of it is that we have to find ways to develop our economy. We have to find diversifying that. And the ones from Lockheed Martin and from Manufacturer's Edge both talked to us about what we can do to possibly bring some manufacturing, especially in the aviation area, to this part of the country, to, to northwest Colorado. So we're going to keep in contact with them. We're going to keep working with them. And they do like the things that we have. They love that, that we have the aviation flight and the aviation maintenance both here on this camp, on, uh, in Rangeley. They also like the idea that we would like to get where our aviation maintenance is out at the airport so that both of them are together and then we can make, make things happen that way. I, it was very positive. I mean, they, they were very impressed with Rio Blanco County. Very impressed with our broadband. I mean, the guy who was doing the video said he's never been able to download that fast anywhere he's been, not even in Denver, as he was able to do it here. So, so we, we're very excited about that and what happened. And like I said, we're going to keep in touch with them. We got all kinds of uh, cards so that we can call them, they can call us, and, and we're looking forward to, to doing that. So I think it could be a good thing for CNCC, but I think it would also be a really good thing for Rio Blanco County if we start getting those things and getting them here. Uh, that's really what I have, unless you have some questions that I might be able to answer for you on either one of those things. I, I was just curious if you guys had any idea how many planes were going to be coming in for the splashing event. I, I, I don't know for sure. I mean, usually it's like three or four, but I, I don't know how many. Uh, I think that last year we had one cancel or whatever. So I, I'm hoping we'll have at least four, but I'm not sure. I know our plane will be there. So it would be splashing down for sure. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Thank and, you. And this was the handout that you all got from today that they gave us at the presentation. It was a really good presentation. Thank you, have a good day. Thanks, Ron. You bet. Hurricanes that wants to talk to you. Good evening. My name is Macy Morgan, and I represent the Rangeley Hurricane swim team. In May, our team came before the town council asking for funds to help with the costs of the swim meet that we were to host at the end of May. Due to extenuating circumstances, our meet was unfortunately canceled. Officials were given conflicting information with a meet in Cortez planned the same weekend. Also, due to the cold spring season, several teams with outdoor pool facilities had yet to hold a practice, and our attendance numbers were much lower than projected. The Rangeley Hurricanes would like to thank the Town of Rangeley and the Town Council for your willingness and generous donation of $250, but as the meet was canceled and that was the intended use of these funds, we, would, we did not deposit the check and would like to expo, express our gratitude and return the check to the Council this evening. Thank you very kindly for the intended donation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You guys, will they reschedule then? Do you think they'll reschedule the meet? For next year. Probably not. It'll be okay. Make sure and <laughs> make sure and come to us next year when you um, when they decide to have a meet too. Thank you for coming. Excellent job. Is there anybody else that'd like to address the council? Hello, my name is Suzanne Tornell and I live at White River Village. I want to thank the town of Rangeley and its leaders for providing a safe, clean, affordable living for your low-income seniors. We have everything we could possibly want. In particular, I'd like to thank what I refer to as the AAA team. 
We have a summer helper who does our watering, weeding, and pruning of all our flowers as well as town's flowers at White River Village. Her name is Sadie Stewart. I also want to thank Susan Turgeon for maintaining our commons area, our new remodeled laundry facility, and our restroom. She keeps it nice, tidy, and clean, and well stocked with paper products. Last but far from least is Janet Miller. She has made a huge impact on my life. As I moved here three and a half years ago from living in Las Vegas for 42 years, I had some adjustments to make. I've planted flowers most of my life, but I never thought once I could plant a vegetable that would come to fruition. Surprisingly, I have three jalapeno peppers and one red bell pepper on its way. Janet took her own time on a Saturday to go to a nursery to pick out good quality vegetables. Each day when I get up, I can go out there and I can see what Mother Nature has done for us. I also want to acknowledge a gentleman who lives there. His name is Marvin Morris. He plays the guitar. On Sunday mornings, he goes out to our gazebo and he worships God through song. This past Sunday, I was in the garden watering, and I can't tell you what a delight it was. And I just want to thank you guys. I know sometimes you don't get acknowledged for your efforts, but speaking for myself, I really want to thank you and your leaders. Thank you. And thank you, Janet, for leading that up. Anybody else like to address the council? Lisa, is there any changes to the agenda? Um, Don is ill, so he won't be here tonight, so Janet will be the only one giving a supervisor report. Okay. Uh, no public hearings. Committee and board meetings. Um, the community outreach meeting on July 1st went well. Uh, we had a good portion of the Special districts, again there, we talked uh, once again about getting uh, an HVAC system since most of the districts are going out of town to get those right now, about um, trying to hire an individual to come to town to work for, for everybody. Ron and his crew were going to do some checking in on that, um, trying to save everybody some money by doing some of this stuff that's not already offered by businesses in town. Um, anything else on that one, Lisa? We talked a little bit to you about the school district and um, they, we have a few entities that have numerous IT people. So we talked about trying to see if we could somehow share them, but that's going to be a discussion as well. Just some people don't require full-time IT. I mean, we probably could keep one half busy, but other people just need them occasionally. So. It would depend on the level of use that you think that each entity has. So that discussion to have maybe at our next meeting. And and there has already been some you know some crossover with um, people take care of some stuff when they're right there with uh, maintenance at their at different buildings and they're real close, so they're taking care of it since they're there. So rather than having to outsource it, so that's that's working also. And offers of people to do things during the winter too. So that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah. What about the Main Street Community Design Workshop, Lisa? So we had a really good turnout of just different people and different things. And this was kind of the um, template they took of different ways that you could um, think about redesigning our Main Street. And they just put us through some different exercises. Um, Andy, Roxy, we, uh, Ron, and Lisa were all there. I thought it went really well. The students were very excited to have the turnout that we had. Like I said, we had a really good mixture of different entities involved. And I um, haven't heard back from them yet, but I plan on making contact with them and see when they're going to start. They were kind of trying to avoid getting in the way of CDOT, so we'll see when you know CDOT starts wrapping up. Um, I don't know if any of the other participants want to add to what I have talked about? You did really well. 
front? I, I, when I saw some of the things that they did, I, I know it, it could cost money and that, but it, they just had some amazing ideas of, of how you can just do a few things and change to a point just the look of the downtown area. And that, and, and that was amazing what might happen. So uh, we, we, were very, we were impressed. Uh, it was very fun. It was a fun time. Uh, actually, we had a good time doing it and, and a lot of input from a lot of different people. And we're not really into this at all, anything right now, right? Um, this is through a grant, and this is to kind of um, help us plan Main Street, and then, you know, we can do it in phases. So, and it, it's really to help us move forward with the Main Street program with the Chamber, because that's what we need to have before they'll move us to the next level. And I, I like the idea of having a plan, too. I mean, we've got a trails map around town that we can start implementing as well. All of the engineering has been done, so... This would be just another piece of us working towards that end to beautify our town and make it more accessible. Okay, reports from council. Does anybody have anything that they need to report? Supervisor reports. Janet? Good evening. So um, on code enforcement with the wet spring, we've got weeds popping up all over, so I'm kind of trying to stay on top of that. Uh, for this month, we have new 25 total new cases this month uh, uh, for a total of 33 cases closed that were in compliance for the month of June. Uh, most of them were weed with 22 um, violations for weed, uh, weeds on property, one for refuse and three for junk vehicles on property. So people are, have been pretty compliant, pretty um, willing to comply and cut their weeds. It's a wet year, and so, of course, we've got lots of weeds. Uh, Main Street, we are super busy. Um, watering and care for the Main Street flowers is ongoing. It's a daily task. Uh, watering of all Main Street trees is ongoing. We try to water them every seven to ten days. Uh, flower beds on Main Street, of course, are watered a couple times a week. Pool Memorial, we care and maintain that, keep the weeds off of it, uh, make sure the system's running right. Same thing with the Auto Museum. We care for all of the plants there, make sure the water's going right, which is, you know, a weekly occurrence. Something's going wrong there, it seems like. Uh, we're weed whacking, town hall parking lot, um, the alley back here we weed whacked. We've sprayed weeds here. Uh, in preparation for the CDOT uh, thing, I had to remove all of the perennials um, from the flower bed across from True Value. I assisted with the transplant of three spruce trees from the cemetery to the outdoor museum. Uh, we removed flower, flowers and did a lot of prep over there on the east end for the day of caring. And we had to re relocate some of the town flowers because of the CDOT construction. And then for White River <coughs> Village, can I bring some pictures? Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> So one of the big projects that we did at White River Village was there was, a, there was an abandoned garden area in the back with just weeds growing in it and kind of a dilapidated fence. So we went in and pruned the cottonwood out of the way so that we could get some sunlight in there. We kind of did it on a shoestring budget, took some old tires, filled them with soil, cleaned up all the weeds. Um, put up, we had a rabbit that was threatening to get in and eat everybody's plants, so we put up chicken wire around around the garden area and created kind of a community garden for the, for the residents there. Um, they've all got the ones that wanted to participate and could have two or three flower pot or tires uh, to grow their vegetables in, and that's what Suzanne was talking about is Martin Go or Marvin goes in out on Sundays and plays his guitar in the, in the gazebo while they work in the, in the garden area. 
So it's kind of a fun project. One of my plans and my goals is to, because it's kind of hard for the seniors to bend over, is to reach out to some, some businesses to try to get some raised beds in there next year so that they can, you know, don't have to bend over us. It'll be, be a little easier for them. So. Awesome. Very cool. Janet, I'd like to tell you thanks for, for doing kind of what a thankless job is because I know how many code violations and, and what you're out there looking at that people don't like to be told what they can do with their property. But in my eyes, you're doing, you know, what what our code says to do, whether they like it or not. And um, to be able to go through and, and issue this many code violations and yet um, not have to issue citations uh, is a pretty big deal to me because you're uh, working with the community and, and not that person that's dictating what's going on. So thank you for what you're doing for us. Thank you. And just so you know, she's also my spare office girl, so <laughs> she feels a lot of position. Any questions for Janet? Lisa? I'm just going to kind of go over all the information items with you. So CDOT, as you can see, is in full force. I thought they did a really excellent job of get, clearing out, you know, their cones during the 4th of July so that our street didn't look quite so colorful. Um, they've, they've really been trying to work with everybody and, you know, had a few bumps in the road, literally. But I think they're, they're, they're working really hard on getting things done. I agree with Ron and Michaela. The aerospace road show today was very interesting. Had some really good conversations, and like I said, just trying to um, get information to them and make sure they know what we have to offer. They, like I said, they were very, very impressed with the internet, and so that's that's what we need. We need them people to know outside our community what we have, and they all love the look of our community too. I've had lots and lots of compliments on both Meeker and Rangeley, which I thought was just a testament to the place that we love and appreciate. Um, hazard mitigation work group is on July 16th and then they will have a, not an open house, but kind of a community meeting for people to come in and just discuss different aspects of that hazard mitigation plan. And I believe that's in our packet too. I'll have to look at the time, but I'll make sure that is um, advertised. The agency meeting in Rifle and our senior picnic conflict. So I like going to those, but I'm going to be here for the senior picnic. And um, Maribel and Janet have both been, well, they all cleared out. Mm -hmm. um, both have been working on all of that. So um, hopefully we'll have a good turnout and we've contacted the Redino bus and they'll make sure and transport anybody from Eagle Crest and the hospital that need assistance in addition to White River Village. Um, our work day is rescheduled to um, July 26th. That's a Friday. Have they sent anything out? Have you seen Andy? Mm -mm. I'll have to revisit that with her and make sure that that's what they're doing. But that's what I was... I thought they intended, but I haven't seen anything for the companies, so I'll revisit that and make sure that everybody knows. And that's also the weekend of Rally Colorado, and the Elks are having a comedy night, so busy weekend. If anybody, you know, wants to participate, there'll be lots of entertainment. Um, the last AGNC <coughs> meeting, and maybe, Andy, you can, you know, expand on the Uinta Basin Railway Environmental Impact Statement, but... I kind of see that, that could be, you know, a, a plus to us if they get to have their railway go even from Craig t to the Uinta Basin because that would put a railway within 20 miles of us. So I don't know if you have anything to add to that or. Um, I'll just. Is everybody familiar with what they're trying to do? So basically, they're trying to get rail transportation out of out of the Uinta Basin to either, well, to the main system. So that would be either. Craig or um, Price are the two directions they're trying to go. They've got a couple options up there. I think we actually, before our last meeting, we had a, an envelope in our box that was them talking about the, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, NEPA, not the NEPA, yeah, it was the NEPA process. Mm -hmm. So they're asking, like, what do your people think? What do you guys want? Whatever. But that's what they're trying to decide is what's the best route? Which one do they want to put it on? Um, but... I'll say this, they've spent some money on it because I have seen 
advertisements on every single online thing I've gotten on in the last three weeks. So this is kind of a serious deal. Where which way it goes, we don't really know. Um, it's kind of up to Nipa and Matt, but them. But it's uh, definitely an interesting project that's under in the works. Um, they, they did say they would be in very tight communications with all of us in the communities to, to try to maintain open communication and make sure that things aren't happening that shouldn't and those kind of things. Um, so it's cool. I was just really impressed because in Utah they, they formed this group and it's a seven county alliance and I just was very impressed with how they came together. They've gotten a huge amount of funding by doing that. Most wishful thinking that we could, <laughs> you know, do the same thing and get a little more leverage, you know, when we're trying to, you know, implement or get things from the eastern slope. So I, I think he would be a great contact to even, you know, try and work towards that end. But I thought this was very interesting. That's a uh, that seven seven county coalition is it only focuses on infrastructure. That's what they do is infrastructure mm -hmm. projects. So. They've worked on, they're, they're also working on a couple different projects. One of them is an extension of, uh, I can't remember the road, what they call it, but basically it'd be another route from from the Vernal side to I-70 to create another access point. I can't, do you Seep, remember the Sea Bridge? It, is it this extension of Sea Bridge yeah, Road? Sea Bridge Yeah. Road. If you get on their website, Seven County... Coalition, infrastructure, infrastructure coalition, something like that. And they, they have all their stuff, all their projects listed on there. They're working on it's. It's pretty, pretty well run organization. I think it's a county commissioner from Uinta County. Yeah, he it's was one. He's not he anymore. was. Yeah, he he's now the director of that. But Mike McKee is that right? Mike McKee. Yeah. So. But any one of those meetings, you could probably get lots more information if you wanted to attend those. And then today, after the um, avionics roadshow, um, Sally Clark, she's the state director for the USDA, came and she had a couple other representatives with her and met with Connie, Karen Reed, and I about grant opportunities. And they had some really good ideas, and they're going to talk to um, their, the, uh, I believe it's PJ and Craig, and um, give us some good ideas about how we can maybe assist businesses and also water and wastewater projects. and especially since a lot of the uh, DOLA funding is going towards, you know, renewable energy. There might not be as big a pot if we don't have that kind of an application. So she said they work in conjunction with DOLA, and I do think we'll have to have a wastewater project in the next year or two, a fairly substantial one, just because of all the changing regulations. So we're going to really look at all of those programs. Karen had some very good questions about how to market our two empty motels. And they had some great suggestions for that as well. So we'll revisit those in the RDA and RDC and just see what we can work towards those ends to utilize as much funding as we can get our hands on. I can't think of anything else right now that we've done in the last couple of weeks to report on unless any of you have any questions. Yes. Um, the, the bike... Rally they're doing the junction to Rangeley bike rally thing. That's next year they're doing it. Well, or are they so doing one we did year? have a meeting, and um, it was since the last council meeting. After talking with the logistics between all of the counties and trying to advertise, um, the Mad Racing um, promoter also talked with Joslyn and I, and we just felt it better to put it off a year and really do it right instead of trying to cram in. And also then we get on their Mad Racing event schedule, which would also give us a better okay. promotional. But we met with Ty Gates, um, Anthony, um, Connie, and uh, Shanna Kenny about the coordination of medical and all of that. And, and we felt like we could get through it all, but didn't think we would be able to get it advertised and promoted the way we should. So we're going to put it off until the, a year from September. Are they going to adjust the dates based on hunting seasons? Well, um, it's going to happen in the middle of the day, so. I would just, I would consider that moving forward. We talk, I talked to Jennifer Hill so. about that a little bit. Yeah, um, there's some concerns. It's just hard. There, so. You can't push it out too late, and there's so many other events 
trying to to go. Yeah. Yeah. Just I that's I, the problem. I would talk to them specifically about when the seasons are because there is a break between some of them. So if you in could October, hit, that's the bad thing. The break. Um, they said in the because it's it has to be almost the first of October, and that's a little worrisome to me about snow. So. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, just food for thought for the future. No, you know, and it, yeah, it, it's, it's hard to find a weekend that isn't being utilized mm -hmm. now. Right. Okay. But Thank we'll, you. We'll have that discussion. Anything else? Other questions for Lisa? Old business, new business. Item A, discussion action to approve. The 2018 audited financial statements as presented by Colorado CPA Services. Marlo, do you want to sit down? And then there is one. <laughs> you can sit down if you want to. It doesn't matter. Hopefully I won't take too much. I know you guys like this is your favorite part of the meeting every <laughs> year. <so. laughs> All right. Um, just a formal introduction. I'm Marla Coates. I'm the owner of uh, Colorado CPA Services, and we've performed your financial audit for 2018. Um, basically, when you have somebody come in and do your audit, it's for this two-page report that's in the very front of your, uh, your, your packet there. We gave the town an unmodified opinion, meaning we didn't find anything materially wrong with financial statements. We don't test every transaction. We kind of pick, pick and choose and test Make sure the functions, you know, you have supporting documentation for bills going out, timesheets, those kinds of things. And based on those tests, we can reasonably estimate that everything else is probably pretty accurate. Um, so that's the, what the first uh, report says. Uh, the next part of the financial statements is called the management discussion and analysis. It's kind of just a quick overview of the town, your different funds, uh, a little bit of uh, summary information for the year, a little comparison to prior years. Uh, so I'm not going to go into too much detail of that, but it's kind of just a quick overview for the year and, and of, of the town itself. Uh, the next section, your actual financial statements start on page 12. The first one is called the Statement of Net Position. This is, shows everything that the town owns or owes, so all your long-term debt, assets, all that kind of uh, information, depreciated assets uh, are on here. Uh, you have two types of funds. You have governmental activities and business type. So your business type would be your um, water, your sewer, and your gas funds. And then um, other than the uh, uh, public, um, public trust fund, uh, those are all considered governmental activities. Um, so they're presented in those two columns. Um, the next section is the statement of activities. Uh, this is kind of similar to a profit and loss, but just a little different organization. They throw up your expenses right away break out your uh, revenues. Uh, in this uh, format, you can see that the governmental activities uh, increased their net position for the year and your business type activities decreased its net position for the year. Uh, the next statements on 15 is your balance sheet for your governmental funds. Uh, you have one, what they consider, it, there's certain quite criteria to make it a major fund, so your general fund's always major and you, all your other governmental funds don't meet the criteria, so they're considered non-major funds. So that's what make up the other governmental funds column in that. Um, this is prepared on, on a modified accrual basis, meaning it's going to be more closer to a cash basis. Anything you guys own or owe within about 60 days after year end, you're not going to see your fixed assets, long-term debt, those kinds of things in here. And 16 kind of shows you how we get back from one statement to, a, to the other. Again, most of it has to do with long-term debt and, and ass, uh, capital assets. On page 17 is your combined statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance for these governmental funds. Um, here you can see that you increased your fund balance for the general fund and all your other governmental funds again. And again, 18 shows you how we converted them uh, to the other presentation. On page 19 and 20 is your statement of net position for your proprietary funds or business type fix funds. So this is your grass, water, and wastewater. This is presented on the full accrual basis. Uh, because they are considered enterprise, you want them, uh, governmental funds, you kind of want them to break even. These ones, you kind of want to make a little bit of money so that you can build the infrastructure later on down the road. So, um, 
21 and 22 is your statement of revenues and expenses in these funds. Here, all except for the wastewater actually decreased their position for the year. And 23 and 24 is your cash flows for these. Kind of just gives you a summary of where you're spending your money on these three particular funds. Both the gas and the water increased their cash balances, but the wastewater decreased it. 25 and 26, your public giving trust fund is a fiduciary fund. It's just kind of what they call it, just a different presentation here. So here you can see that you increased that net position for that fund as well. The next section is your notes to the financial statement. Note one is a description of the town, your elected council, your different types of funds, budgeting process, property tax process, what's considered a capital asset. So just again, much more detailed information on the town and how it's organized. Note three, starting on page 33, is your cash and investment notes. Here is just a description of what you can and cannot invest in being a government. You can't say invest in Coca-Cola stock. It's just something that they restrict you on as being a government. So we don't have any issues on that. You guys are fine with where your money is at. Note four is accounts receivable detail. Again, just more information on your utilities receivable, what you have outstanding at the end of the year and what's considered not collectible because it's an older usually based on the aging of that. The older it is, the less probably you're going to collect on that. Note five is your property tax note. The first section shows what was levied for the year and what you actually collected. You collected almost 100% of that. And then the second part is what's levied for the upcoming year. Note six is a capital investment, or I'm sorry, capital assets note. Again, more information on what you bought as far as equipment, maybe improvements to the buildings, those kinds of things, and then depreciation for those items. First part has to do with governmental activities. The second part is your business type activities. Note seven is your changes in long-term debt. You do have a couple of leases and water loans, those kinds of things. So more information on that, what payments are going to do, when they're due, interest rates. So again, lots of information, more detailed information on some of the items within the financial statements. Note 10 is your retirement notes, information on what was contributed for your employees. Note 12 is your Tabor Reserve. With the Tabor Reserve, you have to withhold some of your fund balance. So there's no issue there. You have enough to have that little storage of the Tabor, and that's $83,000. Note 16 is your subsequent events note. I did put one item in there after year end. You guys had traded off one of the duplexes for a loan, so you guys now own that property. So it's just to let the public know that you now own additional property and don't have debt anymore or aren't going to receive that money that you actually received property for that. $45,000 and $46,000 is your budget comparison schedule for your general fund. Here again, no issues. Your expenses were under your budget, so no issues there. The next section is supplementary information. This is not information we have to give you. We just feel that maybe you guys want to know more detail. For instance, your non-governmental funds, maybe you want to know what those are and what they did individually. So we have those. That's what's on $49,000 and $50,000 is the balance sheet for those funds. And then $51,000 and $52,000 is a statement of revenues and expenditures in those funds as well. $53,000 and $54,000, the next couple are your budget comparisons for your non-major funds plus your enterprise funds. 
Again, no issues there. You were under budget on all of those, um, so so no no disclosures on on being over budget for that. And then after all of those are uh, is the statement for the highway uh, finance report. Again, just something that uh, we like to throw in there for for a little bit of inf more information on that. Uh, so that's the financial statements. And then in the back of of your guys's copy, you have two letters. Uh, if you've received my audits before. They're pretty traditional letters you get every year. Uh, the first one is basically kind of informing the council to, to stay involved. Uh, we know you're small. You're not going to have all your accounting functions. You guys do a good job with what you can separate with, um, but we know you're not going to go hire 10 people to do your accounting functions. So we just got, it's just something we got to make you aware of. Like I said, you guys do a, pr a pretty good job on, on keeping uh, separate what you can keep separate and uh, lots of checks and balances on those. And then the second letter, um, just kind of want to draw your attention to the back uh, of it is actually the the adjustments we did post to the financial statements. Um, I know a, it, it's a lot of pages, but you have so many funds that one journal entry affects you, all of your funds. So, so they are kind of large, but again, nothing that just kind of stands out and says, Yikes, you guys are doing something right. So um, that is my spiel. So if you guys have questions now or uh, later, just let me know. So the town's internal corrosion or control system, is that, um, I mean, is it, I, I, I can't remember from years past. Is this pretty, is this normal what we usually have? Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. And, and all of my audits are, are, are small. Everybody gets the same internal control letter um, and, and it's just because it, all of your accounting functions I mean we like to see one person do bank recs one person just handle deposits one per you know so we just understand that it's, it's being so small it's not feasible. not feasible uh, yeah cost effective so but again it's just something we have to make you aware of So for fun, on the cash and investments on note three, uh -huh. if we were to start accepting cryptocurrency as a form of payment with the town, you would have to immediately transact that to to U.S. dollars. Is that fair? Probably, yes. Because otherwise it would be considered a form of an investment mm -hmm. that is not FDIC insured. Mm -hmm. hmm. Good to know. <clears throat> <laughs> what you say? I said, don't go there. <laughs> it's quick, easy, and painless. Just saying. Any other questions for Marlo? I'll make a motion to approve the 2018 audited financial statements as presented by Colorado CPA Services. Second. Motion's made by Andy, second by Tyson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Marlo. Thank you, Marlo. Item 14B, discussion action to approve the June 9, 2019 check register. There's a big one on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that for the street cheaper? Yep. Two hundred sixty something thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Andy was having some. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went. Lisa, what, what did I? Say? I don't remember what I said. But it was. Well, like, I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I could do this something like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Two point one. It's been doing a great job, though. It has been doing yeah, a it's been busy too. Job. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the June 2019 check register since I signed some of them. Second. Motion's been made by Andy, second by Luke. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 14C, discussion action to approve or to appoint Don Reed to serve on the White River Planning Advisory Committee, committee 
to guide the process of determining if the citizens of Rio Blanco County want to pursue, pursue an integrated water management plan, IWMP. I hoped that Don would be here to explain that all to you, <laughs> but um, I will have him at the next meeting if, unless there's anything that, you know, if you'd like to wait on that, we can. I, I really think Don is the best person to serve on that committee because of his knowledge and his certifications in the water. What is an integrated water management plan? That is something he will have to answer. So that would be my first question. Isn't there something at the I, end that they talks said about that it? the White River is one of I the few um, waterways that hasn't been managed that's left in Colorado, so they, they really want to. Is, this might be what Alden was talking about when mm -hmm. we were out there. Yeah. That's, he did talk about that, now you say that. So. I, I know that Don would probably, like I said, they did give us the um, backup information and when they're going to start talking about things, but Don will definitely give an update on this. But like I said, if they would like someone to serve, I think Don would be a really good choice. Let me see if I can find it real quick, Andy, because I thought there was something. On page 105. What page? 105. <clears throat> like the third paragraph down. Who has been our representative? Do we know? That one. Well, they haven't no. had this advisory committee yeah, prior to this. There hasn't been a... Oh, okay. <clears throat> they're forming a new one. And Don's obviously okay with being on this, volunteered. Mm -hmm. He's expressed his interest <clears throat> in serving in that capacity. Sounds like a shoe in to me. Is there a second? <laughs> Let me make an official one. <laughs> I will uh, like to make a motion to appoint Don Reed to serve on the White River Planning Advisory Committee to guide the process of determining if the citizens of, citizens of Rio Blanco County want to pursue an integrated water management plan, IWMP. Second. <laughs> Motion's been made by Luke, second by... Tyson, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, informational items. I think it's probably right on the flyer, but on item C, the hazard uh, mitigation work group says it's from 10 to 12 p.m., but I think it's corrected in the, in the brochure itself, right? We're having a meeting prior. That won't be the open house. There's going to be a meeting of the core group. And then later in the day, in Rangeley, we'll have a, a community meeting from 4 to 6. So the 10 to 12 is a meeting of the core group in Meeker prior to the open houses they're going to have later in the day. PM? Pardon? PM? Yeah, it's in the morning. Point that it says a.m. or okay. it's a, oh, it's a 12 p.m. Yeah. That's right. Mm, turns p.m. Yeah. But the open right. house in range will be from 4 to 6 that day. Okay. Any other questions? Negative. Melissa? Yeah, uh, did the flyer say where this is being held? They're going to have it here. They do? Mm -hmm. Okay. If there's nothing else to be brought in front of the board, we'll adjourn at 8.04. Thank you, guys. Yay.